In a previous video, I mentioned that I was going to test the oil pressure on the 200 TDI. So I ordered this kit from Amazon. $26. $26 Canadian dollars, including shipping. And it was here the next day. Lovely bit of kit, you know, nice big gauge, goes up to 500 psi, not that we're going to get that type of oil pressure. And comes with lots of different adapters. This is for engine oil and transmissions as well. However, <laughs> it came with every, every adapter except one for the Land Rovers that we are interested in. Which was a bit of a bummer really, so I had to get my machine shop man to make me some special adapters and a lovely job he made of them too. Um, just a little note, the TDI seem to have a, a thread of 10mm by 1mm. And these, I think they, they, I think I seem to recall these are in the uh, old two and a quarters petrols and things like that. And they're uh, what was it, three eighths twenty four thread, very very unusual thread to have. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to test it. I'm going to set this up now, and I'm going to be using this adapter. So this hose is going to screw into here. It's on a taper thread. That's nice, so we don't have to worry about that too much. We'll just nip that up and then we'll screw this into the block. And what we've got also is a hydraulic washer, so we could use it sort of over and over again instead of a copper washer. So we're going to slip that on like that and everything it should be nice and oil tight and we should get some good results. Well, I hope so, because this engine's absolutely stone cold. So we're going to run it and we're going to see if there's any drop in oil pressure as it gets warmer. So I've hooked up the uh, the gauge. Nice long hose. Really pleased about that. You know, you can sometimes gauges come with a very tiny hose. So I'm going to start it up. And this is cold. This is uh, super cold. Look, it's never been started. Good test. Let's see what it does. Oh, the door first, and then see what it does. like that every time. So we're running on 50 pounds at idle. Around about 60 pounds when it's revving up. I can't quite see it squarely from here. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep the camera in this position and what we're going to do is, it's got a bit of a vibration on there but this is a Land Rover <clears throat> I'm going to stop this video now and come back to it when the engine's warm I've had the engine running and it's hot now, it's back to it's at its normal operating temperature and I just want to show you that that is when I did my first readings I wasn't looking at it square when I was talking to you but this is a shade a shade under 50 pounds around about let me see 48 48 pounds rev it up just a shade over 55 the normal operating temperature, the operating pressure for this uh, 200 TDI is 55 pounds. That's good. If this gauge was right down at the bottom, low oil pressure, there'd be some cause for concern when it was hot. Now, whilst I'm talking about that, let me just switch this engine off and I'll, I'll chat about something important. This little 200 TDI is in cracking condition. It's a real uh, testimony to the guy who's actually worked on it over in Spain. He's been really good. Looked after this like a baby. I bet he was sad to get rid of it, really. Anyway, oil pressure. 
All throughout Land Rovers and British cars, the, the switches were pathetic. The, the oil switch for the, uh, the light, they come on at 3 psi, or go out at 3 psi, should I say. So when your engine's cranking, it'll go out at 3 pounds per square inch. But if you're driving along and your oil pressure light comes on, it's sometimes it's a little bit too late. Um, they, they, they're just really bad. I mean, quality cars, quality, quality cars did have an oil pressure gauge fitted in the dash, and perhaps it's a good investment to to get something like that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, what can cause low oil pressure? Loads of different things, really. If your filter's blocked up, if you've never changed your filter, um, that can have a cause on low oil pressure. It depends on the filter itself, but sometimes these, are, once the filter's blocked, it has a bypass, so the pressure's too much and it bypasses, and it dumps dirty oil back into your bearings and things like that, and then, well, again, the party's over. <clears throat> first things first, change your filter, see if that helps. Second thing, on these 200 TDIs, good ideas perhaps drop the oil pan, have a look at the uh, the pump, take the pump out, it's quite easy to do, it's, you know, but on the 300 TDI it's a little bit different because it's in the crank, and the 300 TDIs didn't give that much of a problem, uh, for, you know, oil pump wise, it wasn't too bad, but these ones here, the, the teeth can wear and even the strainer underneath can be blocked. I've seen that happen before. So that's why I'm suggesting drop the oil pan, take off the uh, or the sump, whatever you want to call it, and, and have a look and, and see if there's anything in there. One of the causes of oil pressure that people, you know, like a pump only supplies volume. We should get that clear. A pump supplies volume. The pressure is regulated by springs and bits and pieces like that and resistance to the volume so that's how we get our pressure up. If everything's nice and tight, like the bearings are tight and uh, things like this, then you'll get cracking good oil pressure because the oil's got nowhere to go so that pumps back up to the gauge, like, like here for example, it, it shows us on the gauge that everything's nice and tight. Sometimes on these old <clears throat> engines here, and it's, now I'm talking now about the old series trucks, uh, one of the places I used to find a lot of problems with oil pressure was on the rocker box, on the rocker shaft inside, and the bushings used to get worn. It wasn't as serious as everybody thought. All you, did, all you needed to do is take the rocker shaft out, rebush it, put a new rocker, bu rocker, bush, uh, rocker shaft in, sorry. The, these are the dog's teeth today. <clears throat> and uh, it used to get the oil pressure back up. And the reason for that was, when you've got a, a shaft, how can you say you got, when you've got a shaft uh, running on a rocker, the rocker's wanting to resist and go up. So it, it wears at the, where's it now? It wears at the bottom. That's right, it wears at the bottom. So the hole then becomes out of line and oil can, just takes its easiest route. Remember I said it, it, it builds up the pressure just goes out of anywhere. I mean, uh, it, it's very similar to actually taking a, a bung out the side of the engine if, where the oil pressure light goes and just try to start your car and you'll say, hey, I've got no oil pressure because oil will take the path of the least resistance. So rocker shafts was a thing to look for in the older trucks. Not so much these ones here, they weren't too bad, but it's a thing to look for because it's cheap. Second thing, um, perhaps to look for if you've got your oil pan off just drop the bearings I know it's I know it sounds bad but just have a look at them and if you can get some plastic gauge uh, try see what the clearances are like and a plastic gauge is a little strip of very thin plastic I'll, I'll try and find a link to it um, when I put load this video up and what you do is you put a little strip across your bearing cap and when you you put a strip across your bearing cap and when you put your bearing cap on and you torque it down you then unbolt it again and then you measure the thickness of the width of the plastic. Now fortunately with plastic gauge it comes with a strip 
um, a printed strip on the side of the packet which tells you how so you offer up your plastic and you say oh look it's it's got a thousandth of an inch wear you know thousandth of an inch clearance or if it's not very compressed at all it will probably have about you know 20 thou cut clearance so it's a good little thing to check your bearings if the cranks damaged or scored in any way forget it you'll you'd have to grind the crank I have seen people actually polish big end bearings <laughs> and it did work, you know, but they spent two or three weeks polishing it while it was in situ. It takes a long time. So, oil pressure is pretty serious. There's a reason why it's low. So just check those few little bits and pieces and always start on the easiest stuff. Don't go sort of really complicated and say, oh, we need a crank grind. Because, like I say, it might not be the crank, it might be the rocker shaft that's leaking. Head gasket leaking, where it transfers between the block and the head? Mm, could be. But you'd have oil all over the floor, probably. Or it would be burning oil, because the oil would get into the cylinder. Yeah, it takes a bit of investigation to find out why you've got oil pressure. Uh, low oil pressure. But check those few things out. But if you've, got a, if you've got a little gauge like this, it really helps. But it helps even more if you've got the adapters. Hold on, don't go away. Come back, come back, come back here. I want to show you that plastic gauge, I found some. It's really clever stuff. Let me, instead of zooming in and out, let me show you. This is plastic gauge. All right, that's it there. And actually, that's it. Looks like a little hair, doesn't it? And it comes in a little wallet. I've opened this out a bit so you can see it, but it's it's actually in there. It's got a metric scale on one side and an inch side on the other. But I'm going to do in, uh, inch sizes because it's easier, you know, to work out. So what I'm saying is, you take your bearing cap off and you lay a strip of this across the bearing, and then you tighten the cap up. You take the cap off and this will be flattened. Now even though it's very very thin it will spread out into one of these settings here. Now, I, don't know if you can, I hope you can see this because it's really good. If that stuff there spreads out to a big thickness there that means you've got one thousandth of an inch clearance because what it's going to do is going to spread out. When you compress this it's going to spread out. Uh, if you compress it to that size, it's got three thousandths of an inch. It's a bit broader. Now this plastic gauge, plastic gauge comes in different sizes. This is like one thou to three thou, but you can get all different sizes depending on what. You, so you might the other one's red, blue, uh, all different colours. So I just wanted to show you that because I thought it might be interesting. Not many people see that. One other thing I forgot to mention, which is another problem on these. 200 TDI's for oil pressure and it sort of is a killer for 200 TDI's is the rear camshaft bearing can actually turn in the engine block when the oil pressure is built up um, it uses the, the oil gets through the cam and then into the crank um, you know, there's all different passages in this engine. I can't obviously show you because it's too much of a job. Maybe one day when we've got a 200 TDI block stripped down, I'll show you. But if that bearing twists, it shuts off all the oil passages, and then it's really good night Vienna because your crankshaft will be starved of oil at the back, and you'll knock a bearing out, no doubt. You knock a, a, a big end out, and the, or a main bearing as well. Um, yeah, and usually by that time it's a bit too late. So, you know, this engine, by the way, this engine, even though everything's checking out on it, the compressions were perfect, the oil pressure's perfect, uh, it starts up lovely. This has got 300,000 kilometres on it. Now, when it was up for sale, well, people were put off by the high mileage saying, oh, it's rubbish. Oh, we need, you know, it's 26 years old. Oh, it should have like 10,000 kilometres on it. Well, I'll tell you something. I'd rather have a high 
kilometre car that's been very very well maintained than something that's low kilometre has been just doing backwards and forwards runs, it's getting condensation in the engine, it's getting rust um, and just I've seen them, I've seen low mileage cars and they're absolutely knackered because all they've been doing is just doing shopping runs backwards and forwards, they haven't actually got time to run in or do anything and they're finished really. So I'm not bothered about high mileage cars, in fact I'll tell you a little thing about high mileage cars while I'm rambling. When we used to do minis back in England, the mini engines were so bad, you know, like for um, the, the, the metal and the bearings and, and the machining. If you got to 50,000 miles we got rid of them because, because we knew it's like 60,000 that was going to start burning oil. Uh, but today with the uh, metals that are available and the CNC machining which is very very high tolerance, these blocks are absolutely brilliant. Um, I've taken, one, uh, taken a head off one of these at 400,000 kilometres, or was it 400,000 miles? It was a lot. And uh, we looked inside the cylinders and there was the horning marks still in the cylinders. <laughs> the rings were a bit thin, um, but the bars were perfect. So, you know, don't almost write off a high mileage car. So anyway, I hope that all helps. This is the end now. I can't think of anything else to add. So I uh, hope you have a nice afternoon because I'm going to. Talk to you later.